The NEO is the most affordable DJI drone, a palm launch model capable of autonomous flight for close-range vlogging and an introduction to FPV flying. Several rumors suggest that the new version, the NEO 2, will be released before the end of 2025, following FCC certification in July 2025. This is unusual, as the NEO was released in September 2024, just over a year ago, whereas the interval between new DJI versions is generally around two years. In this video we'll show you the possible difference between the two models, suggesting a repositioning as a new entry model for videography and photography. The original Neo is an unusual product in the DJI line, featuring a CineWoop design with fully covered propellers, capable of flying autonomously or controlled by a smartphone, a remote controller or the RC Motion 3, which is normally used for FPV models. A sort of jack of all trades. The basic offer is extremely affordable at 200 euros, but it doesn't offer any controller. It is therefore limited to a few palm launched maneuvers for close range selfies and basic vlogging. The propeller protection makes flying indoor or close to the ground very safe. When using a smartphone, there are major restrictions. It is not easy to achieve smooth maneuvers without dedicated control sticks and wheels. The transmission is Wi-Fi only, with a very short range and frequent signal loss and flyaways. And more importantly, there is no return to home. In case of signal loss, the drone will hover in place until the batteries are depleted. Which is extremely dangerous when flying at a high altitude. Or even worse, over water. For videography, the best option is to get the Flymore combo, which includes the RC entry controller and two extra batteries. The price is still competitive at about 350 euros. Even with the Flymore combo, there are some important issues for videography. Most users complain about the video quality, which is not up to the task, even for social media purposes. The sensor size is at half an inch, very small compared to the competition, with a narrow aperture of f2.8. The Neo is unable to collect in a flight, and the footage taken in low light is very noisy and grainy, practically unusable. Even in easier light condition, the footage is over sharpened and looks plasticky. In terms of video photo quality, it's not even remotely comparable to the model above, the Flip. Unlike more expensive DJI model, the camera cannot rotate vertically. Portrait photos and videos must be cropped from the full frame, limiting the final resolution to 1080p, a significant drawback for a device aimed at social media creators. The NEO weights only 135 grams and has bulky propeller guards. It is not surprising that the announced wind resistance is limited to 8 meters per second, corresponding to level 4. Unlike other DJI models, the NEO has a single axis gimbal, and on many occasions the footage looks shaky, even in relatively low winds. The announced maximum flight time is 18 minutes, but in real life it is rather between 10 and 15, which is less than any other DJI model. This is another reason for purchasing the Flymore combo with two extra batteries. Another issue causing a lot of complaint is the high noise level, particularly annoying for a model suited for indoor and close range filming. DJI's line below 250 grams includes the newly launched flagship model, the Mini 5 Pro, 
for professional users. Followed by the Flip, which offers excellent quality and features for videography and photography. As the entry model, DJI still offers the Mini 4K, which is a rebranded version of the Mini 2, launched in November 2020, five years ago, a geological era in terms of drone technology. This drone has had an honorable career, but it is no longer up to today's standards and it is ready for a well-deserved retirement. It makes sense to replace the Mini 4K with a model similar to the Flip in terms of video and photo quality, offered at a more affordable price, maybe with a few functionalities missing. In my opinion, DJI has decided to put on the market a second iteration of the Neo, earlier than usual, to fix some issue with the first version and to reposition it as a more competitive model for videography and photography. We already have some solid news about some of the new features of the new 2, coming from photos, FCC filing, and articles from reliable leakers. The new model takes aerial videography and photography very seriously. It will apparently be equipped with a 1 over 1.3 inches CMOS sensor with a video resolution of 4K up to 30 frames per second. 13.5 stops of dynamic range, support for true HDR, and the second 10 bit color profile, D log M. Very serious specs, practically the same as the flip. It seems that the camera will be the same as the more expensive Avata 2, which makes sense from the point of view of manufacturing costs. A new 1606 mAh battery, 12% larger than the previous one, should extend the flight time to over 20 minutes. Another crucial upgrade. A slot for a memory card will likely be added to the new model, something surprisingly missing on the original Neo. There are also rumors of an improvement on the signal transmission to a level similar to the flip. This will be apparently achieved by an add-on module to be applied when using a remote controller. From one of the leaked images, we notice obstacle avoidance sensors at the front and at the top of the aircraft for a possible omnidirectional obstacle avoidance system. A rock-steady stabilization feature should address the issue of shaky footage. Some of the leaked images show double-layered propeller guards for extra safety. Assuming that the selling price will remain close to the one of the original Neo, the Neo 2 could be a very appealing entry model with serious capabilities for videography and photography, capable of autonomous flying for close-range vlogging, with some FPV functionalities. Don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video interesting. Thank you.